So as you just heard, WikiLeaks has published thousands of documents, which it claims are from the CIA Center for Cyber Intelligence. According to some analysts, they're saying a number of these files could prove to be politically explosive. Joining us now to dig deeper into this story is former CIA agent and whistleblower John Kiriakou. John, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. John, uh, this is a, being called the biggest leak ever of CIA documents uh, from smartphones to video games, communications apps, even malware. Now, this is one that I find particularly interesting, malware. That's, uh, you know, when you think about it, when you consider those so-called Russia hacks we've been talking about, according to these documents, this is advanced stuff that the CIA is doing. Could these new documents show that the CIA is actually the Russia that everybody's talking about when it comes to hacking? That's certainly possible. Uh, I think that there are so many questions uh, involved with this leak and, uh, and the information behind it that we haven't even thought up all of the questions yet. I, I have a question um, for the CIA. Uh, if they're targeting iPhones, if they're targeting Android phones, uh, if they're targeting Samsung televisions, half, half of American households have Samsung televisions. Does that mean the CIA is spying on American citizens? Uh, I think that Congress needs to get involved. The intelligence committees ought to be asking these questions. And I think perhaps we ought to be thinking about a special prosecutor. Yeah, and, but thinking back months ago, you know, there was this back and forth, back and forth. Oh, the Russians are hacking. No, it's the NSA. No, it's the CIA. Everybody was talking about something different. And that just that argument kind of disappeared at once. And then we were just left with Russia again. Could this actually track back and prove something very different than what we've been told with the narrative that is continuous? I think it's probably possible. But, you know, all countries do this kind of thing. Uh, certainly the CIA is, is more advanced and more sophisticated. But we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't be surprised or shocked that the CIA is doing this to, to foreign countries. Um, I think that we ought to be shocked and disgusted if the CIA is doing this to American allies, uh, to NATO members and to American citizens. That's that's where the real danger is. And, and that's but otherwise, this is what this is what intelligence services do. It is what they do, and I mean, like I, I used to work for a former, formerly for a UN agency. One, you know, after meeting a guy like Radovan Karadzic, just what do they tell me? You know, you're, you're, everybody's spying on you. Know, your, your phones are tapped. But the average American, this is what we're talking about. And you just mentioned this: your apps, your TV phones, video games that your kids are playing, computers, uh, you, you, everything across the board. Do Americans have something to be afraid of here? Absolutely, yes. I think that this is a very, very serious threat to our civil liberties, to our legal rights, perhaps a threat even to the Constitution of the United States. This is what Americans should be afraid of. We already know, thanks to Ed Snowden, that NSA spends much of its time spying on American citizens. So what's to keep the CIA from spying on American citizens, too? This is really a fundamental question to which we have to get to the bottom of. This tool obviously can be used for good as well as bad. What do you think is the original idea, if there was actually an original idea here, when it comes to the bad guys? I think really the original idea has to be uh, the Iranian nuclear program, the North Korean nuclear or ballistic missile program. And I get that. I really do. I understand that. But the thing about the CIA is, just by its very nature, it will continue to push and push and push the legality of what it does until it's specifically told to stop. And that's the job of the oversight committees on Capitol Hill. They don't tell the CIA to stop, however, and that's where we end up in trouble. That's what frightens me about this whole episode. You know, it, it really comes down to, to you, me, the American people, people in the Western world. What can people do about this? What, what do we need to do to say, stop, this is too much? Well, at least here in the United States and maybe in, uh, in the Western world, we need, to, we need to force our elected officials to react and to respond to this. Uh, we know from WikiLeaks uh, today that the CIA was supposed to share critical threats to, uh, to various systems with the purveyors and the creators of those systems, with Google and Apple and Microsoft, etc. They didn't do that. That needs to be legislated. We need to make it a crime to not share uh, these fundamental threats with their uh, sources of origin. And that way, the makers of our devices can protect us from hostile acts. They shouldn't have to be, or we as Americans, we shouldn't have to be worried about the CIA spying on us. But we, but we are.
and, and we do worry about the CIA spying on us. So we need Congress to, to legislate this, to empower the, the companies that created these devices and created this software to go out and protect us. Now, now according to WikiLeaks, and, and this is a, a one big part of the picture, this is the first release from what they say is a vast collection called Vault 7. Do you have any idea or any predictions what we're going to see in the future come out of this? Because it's massive already. You know, I, I don't. I have to admit to you that I was, I was so taken by surprise uh, with this uh, release, this revelation. Uh, it, it sickened me, just the thought that the CIA... Um, after after its awful history of the 1940s through the 1970s, maybe spying again on American citizens, it made me so angry that um, that all I could do was hang on every word that WikiLeaks was releasing. So I think that um, what we need to focus on, really what the mainstream media needs to focus on, is threats to the United States. Whoever leaked these these documents is is a bona fide whistleblower. The definition of whistleblowing is bringing to light any evidence of waste, fraud, abuse, or illegality. That's exactly what this person did. We need to then act on that information to protect our civil liberties. Well, you're a former CIA insider. You should know if anybody. Is there a will within the CIA to make things happen, to make these changes happen, to protect the American people and to stop this type of nefarious activity that's going on? No. There is no institutional will to do that in the CIA, and that's why we need robust and effective oversight committees, which, frankly, we haven't had since the 1980s. Any hope? Any hope now with uh, possibly with the Trump government, where, with anything, any activity that's going on in the U.S. government or any, any organizations that, that we know of? Is there any hope that this will change? You know, it's not really in my nature to compliment Donald Trump. But I will, I will say that both Democrats and Republicans over the past two years have consistently underestimated Donald Trump. And they may have done it again in this respect. Donald Trump sounded like a crazy person a couple days ago when he claimed that President Obama had uh, tapped his phones or had, had uh, tapped his apartment, wired his apartment at Trump Tower. Now, with, uh, with these WikiLeaks revelations, I'm not sure that sounds so crazy anymore. Perhaps this is what the president was talking about. And if anybody then is going to be able to affect change and to force the CIA and NSA and other intelligence community members to change these, these policies that really are, are ripping at the fabric of the Constitution, I think that president is Donald Trump. Some U.S. officials are now reportedly saying it may have been contractors who breached security and handed over thousands of pages of alleged CIA documents to WikiLeaks. The documents, which were posted online, appear to show how the spy agency can hack cell phones, smart TVs, and computer systems. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange says the release shows how the CIA failed to protect cyber espionage secrets. And he's now offering even more information to tech companies on CIA hacking tools. Mark Hosenball is an investigative correspondent for Reuters and joins me now from Washington. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, first, can you just explain what role contractors would have at the CIA and what type of access they'd have uh, to information? Well, contractors are involved all over both the defense and intelligence communities doing all kinds of, doing all kinds of work uh, that the agencies themselves uh, basically contract that stuff out in order to keep their costs down. And it's also easier to get rid of people quickly if they're contractors rather than if they're on the government staff. So there's just contractors everywhere doing all kinds of things throughout the intelligence community. So, and, and they would have access in, in many cases to some of the biggest secrets in the government. So the idea that the, the contractors uh, had these kind of secrets and that the secrets might have leaked out through contractors is not absurd at all. In fact, you know, Edward Snowden, the, uh, the big NSA leaker from the National Security Agency, he was a contractor uh, working uh, for a company called Booz Allen Hamilton at the, at the time that he took stuff from NSA, an NSA base in Hawaii and fled to Hong Kong and now is in Russia. Mark, officials said the agency has been aware of the breach since the end of last year. What have they been doing with the investigation between then and now? Well, there's a bunch of confusion about that. I mean, we were told exactly what you just said, uh, that they had been aware of the thing since last, late last year, a few days ago. But now I'm hearing there's some questions about that. Insofar as I can tell, Congress, 
the, the congressional committees or congressional leaders who usually oversee these things, they weren't told about it till like two or three days ago, till after WikiLeaks made their public disclosures. It's not clear to me when the FBI became involved, but it probably was not two or three months ago. By the same token, I heard from somebody close to WikiLeaks that indeed WikiLeaks has had this stuff for months and that they also have uh, the, the sort of coding, in other words, the technical instructions underlying uh, this material, which are much more voluminous but very hard to understand unless you're an expert on it, uh, which I guess is the stuff that Assange is talking about supplying to the tech companies. All right, Senator McCain has been very outspoken. He called the leak treason. Senator McCaskill said it threatens national security. Uh, do we know of any repercussions so far? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, certainly I'm not aware of anybody getting arrested. I, I don't, insofar as I can tell, they don't really know who leaked this stuff to WikiLeaks. They don't really know how it was leaked. I mean, as I say, the co contractors are suspected, but, you know, uh, th there's certainly been talk on the Internet. Maybe the Russians did it. I don't think there's any evidence at this point that the Russians did it, but y y you could never say never, I guess, these days. Yeah, which leads me to the, uh, the next question, Mark. The CIA is legally prohibited from spying in the U.S., so what would it be doing with these types of tools to begin with? Well, again, as I understand it, the tools are not quite as devastatingly vicious or effective <laughs> as they've been portrayed. As I understand it, these are not tools where they can, like, remotely, uh, you know, without actually touching your cell phone, hack into your cell phone and destroy your encryption or get inside your encryption. As I understand it, the, the encryption that a lot of people have on their phones, and I even have some of this stuff on my phone, such as Signal or WhatsApp, that encryption is very hard to crack. So they actually need physically at some point to actually have your phone and then they can put tools in it uh, uh, to uh, allow them to crack it before the, the, the messages are encrypted. But that means I, I would have thought that somehow they have to get access to your phone. So like steal it or borrow it or whatever. And that requires other kind of, you know, sneaky spy tricks, which insofar as I can tell have not really been explained at this point. And speaking of access to phones, what are the tech companies like Apple and Google whose technology could be used to say about this? Uh, well, I, I don't think they're very pleased. I haven't been covering the tech companies aspect of this. So I'm not entirely positive, but it's not the sort of thing that pleased them. And again, you know, the, the, the government has already indicated that it has, the United States government has already indicated that it would like to be able more easily to crack encryption on, on, on some of these cell phones. And uh, it's not able to, and the companies are not particularly keen on cooperating. In fact, the companies have said they're going to go out of their way to try and protect their customers. Spoke with Michael Smirconish on his radio show. Here's what he said. Don't, she gave it away. <laughs> Final question, unrelated subject, but I'd be derelict if I didn't ask. Why do you think the president is fixated on you? Why does he keep talking about you through his Twitter feed? I think he's in love with me. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think so. You've had a long relationship with him. Oh, yes. That's all you're saying on that. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, he also talks a lot wait, about As they say on Seinfeld, not that there's anything wrong with that, but go on. Arnold, he talks Arnold a lot Schwarzenegger's about the only guy who has a better chest than Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> he talks a lot about you, Don, so maybe he's in love with you as well. I've always thought that. I think that he really likes me. That's why he talks about me so much. So. <laughs> I think the president is in love with success, and he said that the show wasn't going to be successful, and he turned out to be correct, and so he likes to talk about things that he's in love with. So okay. he's success. in love with Schwarzenegger. Okay, Schwarzenegger like, by anyone's imagination. Anyone's standard is a huge success. He was a governor. He's, you know, he, so anyway, you know, go on. Right. Like, you know, we've now become lulled into this completely parallel universe <laughs> of Donald Trump in which we all of a sudden, this is just kind of normal. It's worth remembering, you know, you know, George W. Bush, when he ran for president in 2000, said he was running to restore the dignity and honor of the office after Bill Clinton, right? There was a time when Republicans actually cared about that. Now we have a president of the United States who just randomly insults B-rate movie actors, and we think, ah, oh, well, you know, it's kind of cute, right? This is crazy. <laughs> it's just totally crazy. We just gotten used to it. <laughs> no, no, we haven't gotten no. used to it. We have not we got, gotten used. We to haven't it gotten used to it. And it's, I mean, as I said, I, I did a um, my take last night at the beginning of, of, of this show. I mean, it's hard to sit here and have these conversa conversations night after night after night and pretend that this is normal. This isn't normal by any other standards. It's the new normal. This would not. No, it's not. It's new. Paris, but it's not normal. So, I mean, don't even try to characterize anyone who has unsubstantiated claims about a former president 
Um, even, even if it were true, he should present the evidence. That's not normal, nor is it nice, nor does it rise to the dignity of the Oval Office. Well, no, and, I, and frankly, think... the, the idea that you would, you would kind of put the entire world on edge with a tweet about wiretapping uh, relevant to, you know, foreign agents, and then in the same and then, moment, by the way, say, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's ratings suck. Tweet, about, tweet yeah. about a television show <laughs> ratings, it sort of makes you think like, what does the president think really matters in this country? And so that is not normal, and it's not something that we ought to get used to. No, well, no, here's, no, here's it is, it's the, it, when I said it's the new normal, look, the American people knew this about the president, the then candidate. They knew that he liked to tweet. He knew that he liked to talk about things that most politicians, longtime politicians, don't talk about. And then, yet and still, they voted for him to be president of the United States, and he's continuing to do that. And are, so, you okay? can I, can I, can I, are you okay with all of the things he says? Would, would I tweet them around or would I do that? No, but that's what he likes that, to do. That wasn't that, my, are you okay with it? I, I'm okay with it because it, does, it doesn't bother me. I don't think what, what a person t tweets around does not have any effect on his ability to lead this country or his, abil his or her ability to be an effective CEO. Wait, so second, I how think, can you say and that I'm, I'm able to separate so them. The, the Twitter sure is a form of communication. How can right. you say that what the president says doesn't have bearing on his right. ability to lead the country? That's I don't, I don't think no any, sense. Like, I, sure, I don't I, think like anybody, I, I, I don't think anybody sitting at the table right now watching Don Lemon every single night thinks to themselves, oh my gosh, I can't get a job. How are we going to pay the bills? Because Donald Trump, the new president, has talked about no, Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, but I think they think the no, president no, no, that, is crazy, that's, and that's, that's very important That's a terrible trivialization. Country. Some U.S. hospitals are fighting off a potentially deadly fungus that doesn't always respond to drugs. More than 30 patients have been diagnosed with Candida auris, a fungal infection typically found in hospitals or similar places. A majority of people diagnosed with the fungus have died, but it's tough to know exactly how dangerous it is because the fungus has affected people who were already very ill. One concerning thing about Candida auris is some strains have been resistant to the three main types of antifungal drugs. Cases are starting to become more prevalent in the United States, particularly in the Northeast. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said that 28 out of the 35 documented U.S. cases were in New York State. In the Factor follow-up segment tonight, reaction from the other side to our interviews with Kellyanne Conway and Senator Rand Paul. Joining us now from Washington, Democratic Congressman Brad Sherman, who is also a senior member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Welcome, uh, Congressman. First of all, um, did you listen to these interviews and your thoughts? Um, especially, let's talk a little bit about the health care and, and what you're hearing from the Rand Paul from the Freedom Caucus saying, I'm not so sure I'm ready to sign on to Paul Ryan's plan. Well, the, it sounds like what Rand Paul wants to do is repeal and not replace. He's saying the Republicans can't agree on what to replace Obamacare with. If they can't, they're not going to be getting Democratic votes for a repeal and replace program. So if they don't agree on a replacement and they go ahead with repeal, that's repeal and repeal. Uh, I'd like to see uh, repeal and republish. Or better yet, not repeal at all. Or maybe, uh, maybe on the, those on the left are hoping that Obamacare sticks around for a while. Well, ab absolutely. Uh, what we've seen since Obamacare was adopted is 16 million new private sector jobs at a time when employers were required to provide health coverage. Now, under all the Republican proposals, employers don't have to provide health coverage, and many of them won't. And what you saw before Obamacare was fewer and fewer employers were providing health coverage. Most Americans get their uh, health coverage through their employer. And if you take away that well, employer mandate, the only, the only you're going to lose. The problem with that theory is, and, and it's not just theory going forward, Obamacare literally is collapsing from within itself because mm -hmm. they backloaded some of the costs so that it didn't look so expensive up front. Well, some of these bills are coming due now, this year, next year, and 2019-2020. Uh, Obamacare is working quite well, and you have the majority of Americans getting their health coverage from their employer because employers are required to provide it. Yeah, but, but, but insurers are pulling out of, uh, out of the system. Next year, there could be, I don't know, five or six states with only one insurer, and then maybe down, down the road, there may be no one to insure these people. The majority of Americans get their policies through their employer, and right, employers but what about have, the, those employers that don't, have dozens I mean, you, 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 of the choices. The Democrats are all worried about the 15 or 20 million people who they say are, are covered under Obamacare who don't get insurance from their employer. If, if insurers say, we can't afford to do this anymore, you're going to have no health care for those people. 
Well, certainly under the Republican plan, you're not going to have uh, many uh, uh, insurance companies, probably none, because people aren't required to have the insurance until they get their cancer diagnosis. So who's going to sell insurance at any reasonable price to a pool right. that, uh, like that? Mm -hmm. Obamacare is working well. We have an all-time high level of coverage. And the vast majority of people are getting that coverage through yeah. their employer. And if you take away the employer mandate, they're not going to have that coverage. And oh, there you're, not okay. gonna, you're talking about tens and tens of millions I'll, of Americans. I want to pivot a little bit to Kellyanne Conway's mm -hmm. interview. Uh, she talked a, uh, somewhat about the leaks and the investigations going on. Your thoughts from the left of what's going on at Trump Tower, what went on you know, during the October, November, December time frame. Well, this wiretap charge comes out of thin air. It's part of the Trump approach of uh, ready, shoot, aim. Uh, he announces and, and declares that Obama is sick or bad because Obama had his Trump Tower bugged and then says, I don't have any evidence that it was bugged at all, but let's have an investigation. That's absolutely well, well, absurd. So, uh, Congressman, someone, someone tapped the Trump Tower. Someone was going after some information from the Trump, Trump Tower. Uh, if you read Breitbart, yeah, but uh, there's certainly no, no, I, no I read, evidence. I, I read the New York Times. That's where I read. On January 20th, clearly on the, front, uh, on the front page, they said there was a wiretap to Trump Tower and that President Obama was notified of it. I'm uh, certainly not aware of that. You know who wrote that? that? By the way, you know the author of that, that piece was Michael Schmidt, the same guy who exposed mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton's private email server. You, you can cite an individual article. The fact is that, Obama, that if, if Trump had proof that the Obama administration had bugged him, they, he would produce that proof. Instead, he, first he makes the charge, then he calls for the investigation. What we need is a special counsel or special prosecutor to look as to whether there was coordination is there between proof? the Trump campaign and Russia. Do you have proof? Russia. I mean, the Democrats have said, you know, there's proof that the Russians coordinated with Donald Trump. No, there is I no haven't proof. Seen to our civil liberties, to our legal rights, perhaps a threat even to the Constitution of the United States. This is what Americans should be afraid of. We already know, thanks to Ed Snowden, that NSA spends much of its time spying on American citizens. So what's to keep the CIA from spying on American citizens too? This is really a fundamental question to which we have to get to the bottom of. This tool obviously can be used for good as well as bad. What do you think is the original idea, if there was actually an original idea here, when it comes to the bad guys? I think really the original idea has to be uh, the Iranian nuclear program, the North Korean nuclear or ballistic missile program. And I get that. I really do. I understand that. But the thing about the CIA is just by its very nature, it will continue to push and push and push the legality of what it does until it's specifically told to stop. And that's the job of the oversight committees on capital. So as you just heard, WikiLeaks has published thousands of documents, which it claims are from the CIA Center for Cyber Intelligence. According to some analysts, they're saying a number of these files could prove to be politically explosive. Joining us now to dig deeper into this story is former CIA agent and whistleblower John Kiriakou. John, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. John, uh, this is a, being called the biggest leak ever of CIA documents, uh, from smartphones to video games, communications apps, even malware. Now, this is one that I find particularly interesting, malware. That's, a, you know, when you think about it, when you consider those so-called Russia hacks we've been talking about, according to these documents, this is advanced stuff that the CIA is doing. Could these new documents show that the CIA is actually the Russia that everybody's talking about when it comes to hacking? That's certainly possible. Uh, I think that there are so many questions uh, involved with this league and, uh, and the information behind it that we haven't even thought up all of the questions yet. I, I have a question um, for the CIA. Uh, if they're targeting iPhones, if they're targeting Android phones, uh, if they're targeting Samsung televisions, half, half of American households have Samsung televisions. Does that mean the CIA is spying on American citizens? 
Uh, I think that Congress needs to get involved. The intelligence committees ought to be asking these questions. And I think perhaps we ought to be thinking about a special prosecutor. No, and, but thinking back months ago, you know, there was this back and forth, back and forth. Oh, the Russians are hacking. No, it's the NSA. No, it's the CIA. Everybody was talking about something different. And that just that argument kind of disappeared at once. And then we were just left with Russia again. Could this actually track back and prove something very different than what we, we've been told with the narrative that is continuous? I think it's probably possible. But, you know, all countries do this kind of thing. Uh, uh, certainly the CIA is, is more advanced and more sophisticated. But we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be surprised or shocked that the CIA is doing this to, to foreign countries. Um, I think that we ought to be shocked and disgusted if the CIA is doing this to American allies, uh, to NATO members, and to American citizens. That's, that's where the real danger is. And, and that's, but otherwise, this is what this is what intelligence services do. It is what they do, and I mean, like I, I used to work for a former, formerly for a UN agency. One, you know, after meeting a guy like Radovan Karadzic, what do they tell me? You know, you're, you're, everybody's spying on you. you know, your, your phones are tapped. But the average American, this is what we're talking about. And you just mentioned this: your apps, your TV, phones, video games that your kids are playing, computers, uh, you, you, everything across the board. Do Americans have something to be afraid of here? Absolutely, yes. I think that this is a very, very serious throw hill. They don't tell the CIA to stop, however, and that's where we end up in trouble. That's what frightens me about this whole episode. You know, it, it really comes down to, to you, me, the American people, people in the Western world. What can people do about this? What, what do we need to do to say, stop, this is too much? Well, at least here in the United States and maybe in, uh, in the Western world, we need, to, we need to force our elected officials to react and to respond to this. Uh, we know from WikiLeaks uh, today that the CIA was supposed to share critical threats to, uh, to various systems with the purveyors and the creators of those systems, with Google and Apple and Microsoft, etc. They didn't do that. That needs to be legislated. We need to make it a crime to not share uh, these fundamental threats with their uh, sources of origin.